The increased political temperature or tension in the country has got me asking a few important questions. One, what might be the end game of these political games? Two, why can political leaders set aside personal goals or desires for the common good? Three, is the increased political temperature necessary at the moment? Four, what is the role of the youth within these interested political parties? Let us begin with the first question. What is the end game of these political games? The answer to this question is very evident. While one party would like to hold on to power, the other would like to seize power. This can be proven through public utterances in public rallies where the interaction is clearly laid out. Is our client call? Here is our client call. One, first, we as a Zimio reject the 2022 election result total. We don't recognize Mr. William Ruto as the president of Kenya. Politicians in Kenya have gotten very bold and comfortable to a point of utter ignorance. When looking at a single elected politician, what I reflect on is the will of the people that elected that individual. And this is articulated by Honorable Mugatana. There's a critical thing about these people that separates them from any other uh, members of the country is that here, when I'm talking to Honorable Segei, I recognize that I'm standing before the personification of so many other votes. So how I treat him is critical. How I treat any member of parliament is critical. How I treat my MCAs is critical. Now these gentlemen, uh, some of them extremely brilliant people, they are not doing that. They are they are not telling the people, uh, we need to organize ourselves. These guys are weak here. These guys are weak here. Can you see? So we need to come back and take over power. Because when we take over power, we will be able to do it this way, this way, this way. They are not preaching to them. They are not talking to them. They are not coming to Tana River to tell us anything. You know, they are not coming to various other places. You know, when you go and tell people the cost of living is high, of course, all of us agree, cost of living is high. So when you tell me the solution is mandamano, I will go home to stand there and listen to your speech, go home. But I've not sold my biscuits, my what that day, so I'm hungry. Over time, what's the end game? You know, so I'm, I'm saying... While trying to determine the end game, among many factors to consider, is the character of the politician. In my view, if one grievance is to be addressed, to its logical conclusion, a second will arise, as is the nature of mankind. Therefore, another question arises. If one party gives in and addresses the issues raised, will the political temperature in the nation begin to calm down? In the county, Azimio's meeting to chart a way forward in regards to the bipartisan talks with Kenya Kwanzaa went beyond members of parliament. The coalition's governors and non-elected officials from member political parties were also present, stamping their resolve that the talks must be beyond parliament. We want a fair process that will give us an accord that will now be brought to parliament 
for ratification by the House. But for starters, seven parliamentarians have been named to lead the negotiations with Kenya Kwanza. They are Narok Senator Ledama Olekina, Nairobi Senator Edwin Sifuna, Kitui's Eno Kwambua, Malindi Member of Parliament Amina Mnyanzi, Suba North Member of Parliament Milio Diambo, Pokot South MP David Kosing, and Rarieda Legislator Otiende Amolo. When you get out there, as Mother said the other day, in another forum, and we see your body language is changing, we will recall you. <laughs> Unapologetically. Lowering the price of food is urgent, can't wait, and does not even need the talks. Opening of the servers is not negotiable. They also made public 10 issues which they say must be on the table as terms of reference during the talks. Five of the 10 are to do with the elections and IEBC. They are to conduct a review and forensic audit of servers before, during and after the 2022 presidential election to review the appointment and dismissal of IEBC commissioners and make institutional policy and other recommendations to consider restructuring of IEBC by devolving structures to the counties to recommend reforms to strengthen and improve the electoral system, entrenching a culture of free and fair elections, and to review the circumstances that led to the dismissal of Chirera 4 and have them reinstated. Anybody talking of Nusu Mukate, on a lighter note, you must tell them, in Azimio we eat whole loaves. Ukifungua saba, itaonyesha Mukate ni anani. We need a proper constitutional review to cure the governance de defects in the 2010 constitution and remove the last vestiges of an imperial presidency. The cost of living being the call used to rally their supporters to the streets. Azimio wants the task force to recommend measures to lower the cost of unga, fuel, electricity and school fees. With some of Azimio's elected and nominated members of parliament having declared their support for Kenya Kwanza, Odinga is not letting up. He now wants the talks to compel party hopers to seek a fresh mandate. We reaffirm that we in Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition are ready and open to a genuine, honest and transparent dialogue in the interest of Kenya, devoid of some of the grandstanding and intransigence we are witnessing from some in Kenya Kwanzaa. With regards to the issue of the cost of living, as you have uh, spoken about, we have reaffirmed as a PG that we believe that the policy this government has put in place are working. That is why six months ago, Kenyans were buying unga at 230 shillings. But today, if you walk into any supermarket, you'll be able to achieve or to buy it at 180 or 190 shillings. That is a price that has gone down. So we, sh we are willing to educate and teach our colleagues from the opposition on how the programs that this administration is running are working. What we are not willing to engage is the failed policies that were done under the handshake government. Whereas we speak today, the Auditor General has flagged that 34 billion Kenya shillings cannot be traced. If you meet the millers, they will tell you they haven't been paid. If you gather a group of 100 Kenyans, you'll be lucky to get maybe one or two who bought unga at 100 shillings. So Kenyans did not see the unga, the millers were not paid, but the money is not there to be accounted for. Surely, is that the kind of policy that you want us uh, to pursue? So I believe we are on the right track. And with regards to the cost of living, this PG has affirmed the position of this administration that the policies that have been put in place are yielding results and we shall continue to pursue them. If there are other questions that I haven't responded to, I, my colleague from the National Assembly will respond to them. Thank you. Maybe I begin with uh, the two by Chamtai and Emmanuel on the other issues that the opposition has raised. And I think as we have indicated, we have as a PG resolved that we shall resist any attempts by the opposition to force or to blackmail government to implement policies that have failed. You will remember there was no unga that was available to Kenyans at 100 shillings. You will also recall the former cabinet secretary agriculture, Peter Munya, 
asserting that the subsidy program for UNGA was unsustainable and was called off way before the election. You are also aware that the same program has been questioned by none other than the Auditor General and the Comptroller of Budget. That the subsidy programs that they are now trying to blackmail government to reinstate were programs that were designed to loot billions of shillings from the Kenyan people. That is why we have asserted as a parliamentary group that we shall support the government's policies towards subsidizing production to enable cheaper food land on the tables of Kenyans. Every politician is a populist. In order to get elected, they have to show that they have the needs of the people in mind. Surprisingly, this is where all factions, all parties agree. The disagreement comes from how the needs are addressed. In our case, the major issue on the table from political discussion is the cost of living. Ule mwenye atakuja, atakuja kuduliza mimi sikusema iki, iyo kitu kwa kusema kweli kwa naisi yetu, iyo kuwacha atoe. Nyumba tutachijengea. Kenyans continue to contend with the reality of the high cost of living, especially after the Finance Act of 2023 was assented to. A majority of Kenyans say life has become unbearable with the prices of essential commodities having gone up significantly. On one hand, the government views that subsidizing production is the responsible way to go. While on the other, I think the unofficial position views that subsidizing consumption is the way to go. What is clear is that the needs of the people is on the cost of living. How to address this challenge is what is in contention. The monthly budget has considerably been trimmed to have 30 kilograms of rice, for instance, has been reduced by 10 kilograms to 20 kilograms, wheat flour from 12 packets to 6 packets, 20 liters of cooking oil to 10 liters, and the amount of milk reduced from 4 cartons to 3 cartons. Spending on food and all you have to because we have to eat, but what I'm saying is now we have had to reduce even the, the, the number of people, like some family members, would rather um, uh, finance them from home than rather than be with them here. It would be irresponsible not to view the global challenges that contribute to the present challenge with regard to the cost of living. Russia Ukraine tension. Now, what does the ongoing strife between Russia and Ukraine pretend for the Kenyan economy? For the first time in eight years, the price of a barrel of oil has hit the 100 US dollars per barrel and mark as tensions between Russia and Ukraine deteriorate. The question that now looms large in Kenya is whether the government can continue subsidizing pound prices as it has for four consecutive months with the landed cost set for the major rise in the months ahead. Uh, but we are hearing, Ian, that it's gone up to 5%. Uh, and I suppose with that result, some may worry. Does that show the bank is panicking? Yeah, that is a very, very significant move indeed. I think uh, the bank's hand, the Monetary Policy Committee's hand, Jane, has obviously been forced by those very uh, disappointing inflation uh, May figures that we got yesterday. I think the bank has decided they had no option, really. If you think about the fact that uh, inflation in May was 8.7%, well, that remains more than four times the, uh, the target rate of 2% uh, that the Monetary Policy Committee is, target, is mandated to target. In our next report, we look at how, for most coffee farmers in Kenya, efforts to mitigate the impact is turning out to be costly and time-consuming. Take a look. Climate change has led to unpredictable weather patterns, which have affected coffee production in most parts of Africa, including Kenya. Kenya grows mainly Arabica coffee. When coffee plants suffer prolonged periods of inadequate rainfall and drought, the leaves fall off, leaving the plant unproductive and vulnerable to diseases such as millibar. Noting that indeed the cost of living is a global challenge, what is unique to our country is the real puzzling question. If these challenges have contributed to the rise in the cost of living, then what solution can we employ? What solution is within our control?
South African President Cyril Ramaphosa met with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Saturday, telling him the war must end in Ukraine. Ramaphosa is part of a seven-leader African delegation that's now talked with both Putin and Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky in what it says is a peace mission. Putin said Russia is not giving up on negotiations with Ukraine. These, among other interventions, can offer a reprieve to the challenges we currently face. Unfortunately, they don't offer a quick solution as is the expectation within the country. Regardless of the intervention, be it a delegation sent to Ukraine and Russia, or a delegation advocating for climate change financing, or other interventions seen or done by the state, the political narrative is that the cost of living has not been addressed and the situation is worsened by the Court Suspended Finance Act. So you're probably wondering what the impact of the suspension of the Finance Act will have. It simply puts the government's plan in limbo over certain aspects. One of them will be the collection of the 1.5% housing levy, which will now be delayed. Another one is the new tax bans for earners of over 500,000 shillings. That will also be delayed. Also, the 16% on VAT and fuel should ideally have been delayed, but you know what has happened so far. But even then, LPG VAT exemption has also been delayed. The 3% turnover tax will also be delayed, and the 5% digital content withholding tax, that too will be delayed until direction is given from the Chief Justice Martha Kome. But also, what that then essentially means is a grand total of 311 billion shillings collection by the government. That too will be delayed in terms of taxes. So we'll wait for further direction from the court. That is the impact of that Finance Act suspension. It is very clear that in a game of politics in this country, the plight of the people is indeed a chess piece that is used to effect a desired political outcome for politicians. What is most saddening is that young people are the currency used to effect such desires and when will young people sober up and stop being the currency used by politicians? The next question we shall tackle is why can't political leaders set aside personal goals and desires for the common good? For the unscripted opinion, I am Joseph Njau. See you soon.